special uh, incentives that are available for schools. So this, the intention of this meeting, and hello, Chris, I see my colleague from the school committee meeting here, um, also on the capital committee. The intention is to, uh, that th this is an exploratory meeting. We're asking questions. We are finding out what our options are. Um, we, here's Paul asking me for um, the password. Um, he's on his way. Um, as I was saying, uh, just exploratory. Our intention is not to make any uh, decisions. Our intention is just to get the options so that we can bring it back to the larger school committee and see if any action um, is necessary or decisions uh, should be made. So um, hang on one second. That's my uh, our third school committee colleague, Paul Pfeiffer. And Paul, I've made you co-host. Morning, everybody. Morning. morning. Um, all right, I think that is everyone. Uh, let me just double check. It is a, a little bit of a long list. Um, we have uh, Annie here, Chris, um, Daniel Phillips, I think is... Uh, that's, Chip, that's me. That's yep, me. same person. All right, excellent. Um, so um, actually, as I run through this, um, Chip is joining us from Eversource. From um, Colliers. From Colliers. I'm right. very sorry. sorry. Oh, no, no, not a problem at all. Appreciate that. Um, Sarah Ross is here from Undaunted K-12, a nonprofit devoted to helping schools look at uh, green and renewable energy solutions. We have uh, Timothy Simmons, not here. Um, we have Ryan Wilmington, also not here. Oh no, it, Ryan is here. Sorry, I can see half. Yeah, I'm here, good morning from Eversource. Good morning, thank you. Um, and uh, James Piermarini is not gonna make it, nor is Kimberly Cullinane uh, and Matthew McTiggue, yeah. uh, Matthew from Eversource. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone. Um, just to recap, uh, we earlier this year, we asked Colliers to um, do an assessment on our high school building to see what uh, our capital needs were. Um, and thank you Colliers for having done that assessment, um, presenting a proposal of work uh, upon which we based our capital plan. Um, in the meeting where we received that information, we had a lot of school committee um, ideas and support for um, uh, clean and green energy initiatives, but I think we didn't take action at that time to ask Colliers to go back and do anything different. And um, fast forward to November, um, I was able to attend the Massachusetts Association for School Committee's annual conference where I met um, Sarah Ross and um, someone from Eversource and a panel of people talking about um, making schools uh, green. Um, we have a, a key um, opportunity to, um, to make choices like that in light of the fact that our HVAC system is going to be replaced. So we'd like to learn what our options are for uh, high efficiency, all electric, uh, clean energy, uh, heat, 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 HVAC. Um, and uh, we'd love to get your input on that. Um, Colliers and Eversource and, and talk about what kinds of incentives might exist. So I guess I'll, uh, you know, what I'll ask um, is, I'll ask my colleague, um, Paul Pfeiffer to add anything. Paul, you've been in the clean energy space for a lot longer and you, I, I, I know that you have ideas about this as well. So I'll, I'll ask you to chime in as well before we open it up for Eversource and Colliers to, to um, have this conversation, and also Sarah Ross. I wouldn't mind getting your feedback as well. Paul? 
Oh, thanks, Jim Aaron. Thanks for setting this up. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I think just details, right? We we have an old uh, boiler system. Uh, Chip and folks have done a good job itemizing that. That's a couple million dollars upgrade for our Hopkins facility, which is seventh through 12th grade. So it's a large facility, right? I think I forget 60, 65,000 square feet or something. It's, it's large. And so is there a way, especially now with the passage of the IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act to capitalize on some of those incentives? And then I, I think it's not just uh, options like ground source heat pumps, but potentially solar as well. What can we do as a full package? And I will say Hadley as a community is looking at these for all public buildings. There's a climate change group within the um, within the, the town that's asking these questions. So I'm, I'm engaged with them as well. Um, and they're curious to see what, what we hear today. So I'd like to leave with some some clarity on, hey, what is available? How do we how do we get a better assessment of what the costs are for both those? What uh, what federal tax subsidies are we looking at? And that kind of thing. Thank you, Paul. Sarah, would you like to add uh, any additional information to that? Sure, thanks so much, Mara. Thanks, Paul. Thanks to you all for being here. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, I just, I wanna thank first the Eversource folks for being on today. I will say that um, 12 years ago, I had the benefit of partnering with you all on a deep energy retrofit of a hundred year old farmhouse in Amherst. So I'm living in the residential version of what I would love the students of Hadley to be able to have at their school. So I know you all are awesome partners. You were for my family way back when. Um, and as you know, Paul mentioned, we've been uh, doing a lot of work as a nonprofit to get the word out about really the new landscape that pairs the Inflation Reduction Act and you know, wonderful new deep energy retrofit incentives, you know, specifically for heat pumps also from, from you all. So excited to have this conversation and uh, Chip, thank you so much for your work on the existing facilities and the great presentation. I got back to what we watched that from April. Uh, it's wonderful to have a partner like you, and it's clear that you've got a vast experience with this stuff at multiple sites that this uh, district will really benefit from. So thank you so much. I'll just chime in and just say we're, we're lucky to have all of you, right, Chip, and, and folks from Eversource and Sarah. You're a great resource locally. So um, it seems like if anybody can put this all together, hopefully we can. Great, um, thank you um, to everyone so far. Um, I'd love to get Eversource um, thoughts and perspectives about what kinds of things we should be thinking about uh, as we um, were originally planning to just change out our current oil-based um, HVAC system um, with a one-for-one. -one. What kinds of things would you urge us to look at instead and why? Sure, I'll, um, I'll jump in and, and first I'll start by introducing myself. Um, you mentioned a couple other people from Eversource that, that aren't on the call today. Um, Tim Simmons, Jim Piermarini. Um, Jim, he's, he's not an energy efficiency consultant anymore. He was, he was promoted, so he's a supervisor. So, so I've, I've kind of stepped into the role of EEC. So, so I am an energy efficiency consultant for Eversource and my, my only customer base that I work with is municipalities in Western Mass. So, so I use me as a resource whenever you guys have any questions for, um, you know, energy efficiency incentives or, or, you know, engineering help, you know, please feel free to reach out to me directly anytime. Uh, I'm always happy to, you know, jump on calls like this, answer questions or come out in person if necessary, or, you know, send me a quick email if, if you have a particular question. But that's, that's my role is to help municipalities, you know, through the different avenues of, of incentives for energy efficiency. And um, I think Ryan Willingham, you're on the call. Ryan Willingham, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, you're kind of a, a subject matter expert for, for heat pumps. Is that kind of a, a good description of your role in electrification? Yeah, so I work in our technical solutions group. And so I was um, instrumental in, in standing up our electrification offerings, as well as our newly received newly uh, released CNI deep energy retrofit offering. Um, so I'm here mainly to support Matt because uh, he's more the customer facing entity, but if he gets into some of the weeds about electrification and uh, deep energy retrofit, then mm -hmm. I can help answer some of those questions. Great, thank you. Yeah, and then um, just coming back to, so I'm not sure who forwarded to me, but I, I took a look at the, the report from Collier's. Um, the measures in that report, I, I didn't see a whole lot geared towards energy efficiency specifically. So the stuff you are 
are kind of talking about now, is it above and beyond this report that you're looking to do? Or is it seeing if, if anything inside that report qualifies for energy efficiency incentives? I think it's both. I think we're looking to see what within our current plan should we be rethinking with uh, in light of incentives and clean energy options? And what should we be augmenting our plan with in order to make that most viable? And we're looking for smart solutions uh, across the board. Um, and now's the time with a 10-year horizon and some money saved up to, to do this based on uh, ESSER funding. Um, we can make intelligent choices and um, we have a runway to be able to get the buy-in from the community and, and really do some fact-finding about uh, what's right for us. So we, you know, I think it's a, a little bit of a, I'd like to approach it like a clean slate um, and say what's what's truly right for uh, the, the the planet and for energy efficiency for uh, this this building that we're stewarding. Sure, sure. And then uh, I guess a, an additional follow up question is, you know, what what is the town's goals? And and you kind of answered that in your in your last statement here, Mara. But is it, you know, to get completely off fossil fuels? Is it to reduce costs as much as possible, or you know, a combination of the both of both of those? Um, you know, what's what's the 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 driving force behind this you know is it you know getting off fossil fuels well i can't speak for the town um because we are a separate and elected um a, a body uh, as a school committee and we're responsible for um just the infrastructure related to the schools um we do have as paul mentioned a climate committee they put forth a pretty ambitious resolution um it was um, not passed at the last town meeting. Um, I'm sure future iterations will be passed. Um, I think our goals as a school committee body are to, again, make intelligent choices that are um, uh, financially responsible and in the long-term best interests of um, the Hadley ecosystem. And that includes our environment and our planet, I think, um, and we in the future sh will, you know, should have a school, larger school committee conversation about what our priorities and our values are in this regard. But I imagine that um, modeling for students and showing them what's possible through clean energy, green energy um, technologies, and having them become far more aware and uh, conversant in and possibly interested in getting into technologies that are only going to expand uh, as we as we go forward. So I'd, I'd love nothing more than students to be able to see solar panels that power a school, um, you know, all, all the all the things that are possible within reason and within our means. So mm -hmm. we, we would like to understand what's possible and then maybe we can uh, you know, bridge that with what our, you know, what, what are our means? Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, when I'm talking with towns and, and they're <clears throat> discussing, you know, switching over to electricity, usually the first step we have would be to, um, you know, bring in uh, an engineering company. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not incredibly familiar with Collier's. I've, I've heard the name a bunch of times, so I'm not sure if this is something you guys can do, but usually the first step is, you know, a relatively quick feasibility study where, you know, an engineering company comes in, takes a look at the building and sees, you know, is this a good fit for an electrification project? And, you know, the outcomes from that would be, you know, you, yes or no, is this a good fit? And then, you know, a ballpark figure on kind of what the cost may be. And um, I don't know, Ryan, feel free to, to jump in and, and uh, you know, add any additional information on this, but, but that, that might be a good place to start. For, for this building is, is to have an engineering company do a quick walkthrough and, you know, get their kind of opinion. And and from that Collier's report, I see that you guys are replacing the roof. I don't, I don't know how it didn't have the, the exact scope in there, but it said roof replacement. So, I mean, if, if you're replacing the roof, I mean, that, that might be a good time to, you know, do the, do the additional duct work that would probably be necessary, add, add some additional insulation into the roof and, 
And since you're already replacing the roof, that would, you know, reduce the overall cost for, for a project like that. So um, to chime in, I think it's roof membrane, right? It's not a full roof repair. Oh, no, it, it, it would be, it would it's be the full roof. roof. Yes. Or that, that was but, I, but I think we weren't, you know, we weren't the roof replacement isn't, you know, we were kind of thinking the five to 10 year range. It's, you know, it's certainly not in poor condition at this point. Okay. It's down the road. Now, if you're going to be, um, you know, doing a major solar project, I think the best thing to do is to align those so that, you know, you're not you know, doing the solar and then replacing the roof a couple of years later. You want those to align at the same life cycle. So yeah. you know, you'd want to consider that earlier problem. And I think you all may, about a, a little over a million, 1.2, is that right? One, yeah, almost 1.3 million. Okay. Which is which is as prices have gone since then, that is light. Sure, we have, we have coupons. May, may I chime in on the roof? It's Annie again. For those who don't know, I purposely have my camera off today. There's some reasons for that, so I apologize. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chip. Uh, I believe actually there's kind of maybe three roof mentions, or at least two, in that overall capital plan. So the roof had had right. the elementary school. So it had the elementary school. We are looking in that capital plan right. at total roof replacement. That roof would be roughly probably closer to replacement time because that building was built in the early 90s-ish or late 90s. So we're getting closer to what makes sense. I believe that Hopkins Academy, the majority of the roof was replaced uh, when Dr. Young was here. So let's put that maybe in the late 2000s. Um, that there was a roof replacement at Hopkins Academy in the majority, which is why you're saying, Chip, that even if we're looking for MSBA funding, it's age probably for the majority of Hopkins roof. That doesn't mean anything's off the table, but when we're looking at possible funding sources, Mass School Building Authority is going to take into consideration age of and last major renovation. So the Hopkins roof for the most part is newer. However, there is a replacement on Hopkins that is specifically the cafeteria right. was not included. There's two Parts doesn't mean it has to be done this way, but again, this is just thinking through the likelihood of MSBA funding for um, renovation for that accelerated repair program. Um, that most of the roof at Hopkins probably wouldn't float to the top of the list at this time right. uh, for and, MSBA. And the M as, as I understand, the MSBA also has put a halt, a hold on the. Um, accelerator repair program for the time. They have, period. but I'm just chatting like this, yeah. right? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's coming back. It'll yeah, come back. The time being. <laughs> they have. And also right now there are, um, IRA, uh, in uh, Inflation Reduction Act that may or may not, but you are absolutely correct. Yeah, that's important to point out to people. Okay, so Matt, getting back to you. So you said let's do a, an assessment um, of what, what exactly are we assessing? Feasibility of... Yeah, system. yeah. Um, so, so there's there's engineering funds that are available through Eversource where um, at at no cost to you we can have an engineering company come in and do you know a high level walkthrough of the building and see if it's a good fit for electrification. Uh, a, a relatively, um, a, I'll I'll say ballpark cost estimates on what an electrification project might cost for the building, and and. And like that, and then you know, if if it's determined it's a good fit, if you guys, if the town decides they want to move forward with it, then um, you know, getting a you know a design team, uh, a a deeper a deeper engineering study on the building to you know determine the exact cost to you know create the the documents that you guys would need to make a bid if that's something you guys uh, would want to do is to create a bid for it, um, and and down that lines. Um, uh, another thing, I, I'm not sure, I'm not too familiar with the school, the high school that we're discussing, but, you know, there are a lot of other energy efficiency measures that, that can be looked at. I don't know if you guys have upgraded the lighting to LED, but that's that's one quick cost-saving measure that, that we can do. Um, we could look at the weatherization of the building, which is, you know, the insulation and uh, the air sealing. Um, before you guys put in uh, heat pumps or switch over to electrification, um, that's something we would definitely want it to do is, is weatherize the building, you know, make it airtight. So there's, you know, there's not air leakage um, that would lead the, the heat pumps to have a better outcome and, uh, you know, better performance for the town and the building. Um, but uh, can I ask in, in that ballpark cost, do you also help us understand the potential um, incentives, rebates that we would get federally and state? Yeah, yeah, we could, we could definitely um, talk about that. The way the incentive for heat pumps work 
um, it's basically down to the size of the heat pump that's going in, the heat pump or heat pumps going in, basically the, the tonnage of the heat pump, um, the style of the heat pump, there's a couple different styles of the heat pump. And then, and then we can we can pretty quickly uh, get you a ballpark on the incentives um, for the heat pumps once we get an idea of the the models that they're planning to put in or you guys plan. Okay. okay. And as I understand it, whereas the residential customer might get a thirty percent off on their tax break, um, forwardable for a number of years, uh, that municipalities and uh, schools that don't pay taxes get direct cash payments from the federal government as part of the incentive program. Not sure that that's, uh, that it, that any projects have gone that route yet. It's still early days, but in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. Is that correct? I, I'm not 100% familiar, uh, 100 familiar with, with that. It's not something I have worked with in the past. Usually it's, you know, the town um, works with, you know, uh, some financial advisors to figure out the tax aspects of it. It's, it's not something that I'm comfortable advising on or, or, you know, every source in general, I, I, I really can't, I don't want to lead you down the wrong path or give you a wrong answer. So, so I don't, I don't really feel comfortable giving you a, a complete answer on that one. I know there is a lot of changes coming through the IRA plan over the next year. Um, and I, I think they're still trying to figure out the best ways to implement them. So, um, I think hopefully early 2023, mid 2023, they should probably have that kind of figured out. And I don't know if, if a lot of it is going to end up getting routed through Mass Save or um, another state entity or not. So you know, I'm I'm I don't really feel comfortable, you know, commenting on on tax tax breaks. So well, we we wouldn't have tax breaks because we don't pay taxes. So uh, or or yeah, incentives or, or rebates from the government. Municipalities. Yeah. yeah, Sarah, what are you seeing as a national nonprofit in other uh, regions? Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, a piece just came out from a group called This Is Planet Ed that detailed the support that is available for schools through the Inflation Reduction Act. You know, in particular, it details an up to fifty percent. Uh, reduction in the cost of uh, technologies like ground source heat pumps. So there's a base incentive of 30% um, and then additional adders if, you know, projects meet certain conditions. So there are substantial uh, uh, support, there's substantial support from the federal government for, you know, that, that particular technology. Uh, certainly, you know, as Matthew was stating, this is a somewhat new um, new evolution of this incentive, uh, allowing it to be taken as a direct cash payment, as you were saying, Humera, by non-taxable entities like schools. And we do expect guidance from Treasury, hopefully in early Q1, about exactly some of the mechanisms uh, that will uh, kind of allow that to, to take shape. So we, we are in early days here, but it's certainly, um, that has been the intention of the Inflation Reduction Act, and that's kind of what, what the law offers districts to start considering. That's excellent. I hope we can take advantage of that. The other thing I have a question about is uh, solar. There's uh, the kind of solar that you uh, can own outright. And then there's the kind of solar that you partner with a company who owns that solar, implements it, pays for it, and you experience the energy benefits from that. Um, can, can you comment um, uh, uh, one way or another about whether there are incentives, either Sarah or Matt, whether there are incentives um, for that latter model where we might not have to uh, engage in the investment part. Um, I'll, I'll jump in. I'll, I'll say, you know, Eversource, we're, you know, we're pro solar. We, we encourage our customers to take advantage of solar. Uh, we do not incentivize the installation of solar. Um, all of the the financial benefits, you know, come on the the back end of you know um, net metering and the reduction of your electricity bill. Um, and and I'm not a particular expert on the subject, but the, just the way it's set up from the state through Mass Save, we we don't incentivize upfront on the installation of on the installation of solar. So Matt, uh, EverSource may not, but solar companies. Mm -hmm. uh, have businesses that do that, right? That they they work directly with municipalities and solar farms and other such things to uh, install that technology at a no cost basis. Um, so that it is, 
I, am I, is, is that yeah. sound right? And maybe Matt, may, perhaps Sarah, that's a question for you. Yeah, yeah no, you, you have it right. There's basically, you know, two business, there are two options here in terms of ownership where the district would deploy its own capital, own and manage the asset. And then, you know, second option is to do a power purchase agreement where a third party would deploy their own capital. They would install and, and manage that asset. You know, both are, are possible options that municipalities take. Northampton, for example, has, you know, city owned solar that, that they have. The vast majority of schools, I will say, have used the power purchase agreement uh, model. Um, that may be somewhat tied to the fact that in the past, one of the main incentives is tax incentive was not available to them. And now again, with the Inflation Reduction Act and that same direct cash payment that we were talking about earlier in the context of ground source heat pumps, now that is available to districts. So, um, you know, they, they still have to come up with the other, you know, kind of 70% of the capital investment. And there's still, you know, good questions to be asked about the competencies that districts have to manage those assets. Uh, especially when they are increasingly paired with energy storage. Um, but yes, both models are possible. And, you know, as you alluded to, Humara, there are um, state incentives through the SMART program for uh, districts to, you know, install solar. And those incentives, you know, are available whoever the owner is, right? So these are really two separable decisions, you know, kind of um, do we want to own or have a third party own that? And, you know, the owner will be the one to kind of access those incentives. Very good. Thank you. Um, Paul needed to drop. He writes in the chat, I really would like to take Eversource up on their offer to conduct an assessment. That's a chat to all of us. Um, I, um, I, I wonder, Annie, is that something that regardless of uh, or, or Chris, regardless of school committee, you know, decisions you would be doing anyways and could proceed with. I know, Chris, you have your hand up. I'm going to jump in on one piece here. We had already talked with Chip and Chip can confirm this too. Um, but we had already, the school committee in a public meeting had already discussed about having, um, using ESSER funding for this kind of, um, evaluation of before moving forward with HVAC. Yes, we did. And so in this case, Eversource has said, look, we can do this preliminary thing that gives you information on, is it a good fit in ballpark for electrification at no cost to schools? It seems to me that the logical approach would be to take up Eversource on this. And again, I can add this to the school committee agenda for the 20th to be discussed with the entire um, school committee. My recommendation, again, I'm aware we don't have a quorum now, we're not voting, and I'm not an elected official. I'm suggesting that we would take Eversource up on that is what I would recommend to the school committee. And then as Eversource, as, excuse me, your name is Matthew, not Eversource, as, as <laughs> Matthew indicated, um, there will be, uh, still, we will still need to do a um, in-depth uh, evaluation. So we would use the ESSER funding for that, that regardless of what the recommendations are from the initial evaluation by Eversource, we would still need a subsequent, um, uh, and that the Colliers would assist us with, and that we would use the ESSER funding from. But I'm also happy to present that to the entire school committee on the 20th. Terrific. Um, Chip, Matt, anything to add based on, on that? Um, no, just maybe um, thinking about the time frame. How how soon is the town looking to kind of start this initial assessment and you know kind of manage expectations? Being that uh, in in my it, this doesn't affect you guys, but in my world, December is kind of the busiest time of the year, um, and a lot of engineering companies are busy closing out projects at the end of the year, and uh, just to you know manage expectations. I think it might be. Um, probably January, February, March kind of time frame before we might be able to get an engineering company in there to do it. So probably late, late Q1 is, is maybe a realistic expectation. And, and may, maybe, you know, there is some availability a little bit earlier than that, but, you know, just to, you know, get ideas, is this something you guys want to get done as soon as possible? Is, Can is I jump in? I'm sorry, just to protect the school committee quickly, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> going to say this. So definitely 
December 20th, they'll talk about it as an entire body. So you're not going to see anything happen in December. And a clarification, I know Humira already said this, it, it's fine that you're referring to the town, but I just want to restate again, the school committee is speaking on behalf of the school committee, and they are not speaking on behalf of the town, as the chair had said. And now I'm going to stop talking, I promise. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Amy. Um, yeah, so you consider uh, our expectations uh, having been managed, once we have a decision to move forward, I'd love to see something happen as early in the year as possible so that we can have that cascading next step of Collier's also following on with their uh, more thorough assessment. Chris, did your you have your hand up. Do you have a comment? I do. I have a couple. Um, number one, we've already done the LED upgrades in the building, uh, so Excellent. that's all set. And number two is that um, the town had arranged for an inspection of the schools. The guy showed up the other day um, and and was inspecting the building for energy improvements. I don't know the scope of what they were working on. I know they were looking at insulation um, and they were in the boiler room, but I don't really know. Um, Jeff Mish would have a better idea of what they were doing. Um, but so we might want to try to coordinate with the town on this so that we're not double checking, um, you know, things I'm again and again. Chris, I imagine that Matt could probably pull up whether you have an energy efficiency having been conducted already at Hopkins Academy. Do you need a street address? Um, Hopkins Academy, let me just, so. so they I were work in both with, schools, actually. Do you, Chris, by any chance, do you happen to know the name of the company that was? Uh, I have no doing idea. It? No, I'm okay. sorry. Uh, the facilities director came to me and said, hey, we have people in the buildings doing uh, an, an energy audit. And, and I said, I didn't schedule it. And then we found out from them that the town had scheduled them to come. Um, okay. So I don't, like I said, I don't know the scope or who it was that they brought in. Sure. Um, you know, we can certainly check. Yeah, we, we have a number of uh, vendors in the, we, we call it the municipal program, that they actually do sales and outreach to towns um, to, to get audits done for the buildings and then, and then kind of recommend upgrades. So so, you know, they, they kind of act on their own. They, they don't always keep me posted on it. But, you know, if, if you gave me the name of the company um, or the gentleman, it's it's one of probably three or four different companies. I could reach out to them and, you know, let them know, you know, we're, we're working on it on a different avenue here. And, uh, you know, let's make sure we're not doubling our efforts here and, you know, combined resources. So uh, sure. if you get me the name of that company or, you know, the contact person, um, you know, I could reach out to them and, uh, you know, see where they are and see what their plan is. Sure, I'll reach out to him. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Was that your two comments? Are there more? Yeah, I think that they did the lighting and that Sorry. another yeah, that vendor was, was in. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, Chip, I want to give you a chance to uh, weigh in on anything that's been discussed so far and potentially share with us any perspective that Colliers has um, on any of this work. Sure. I mean, you know, our scope was really to focus on existing conditions and identify uh, needs and put together budgets. Um, you know, the old steam system uh, with with um, pneumatic controls is not ideal in today's uh, world, but uh, at the same time, the boilers were replaced. So there's not an imminent threat of boilers failing because they're actually not that old. They were, you know, replaced in kind with steam boilers. And our recommendation was that, um, you know, that should be replaced over time, but that also um, a plan should be put together through, you know, an engineering partners uh, on, on how to go about that, what the steps are going to be so that if equipment fails, you're not stuck replacing in kind again, that there's an overall strategy on where to take the building. Uh, it's it's great that you're now you know moving forward with that and moving forward with that in a in a environmentally um, you know uh, friendly manner. Uh, so that that's what's that's great. But um, you know, I don't think that there's I don't think that there's urgency that this is something that you're going to need to do in the next you know couple of years. So that there's you know going through the process, I think makes sense. Yeah, it may um, it it may not happen overnight, right. but the getting stakeholder buy-in um, mm -hmm. and is is going to take that runway. And so exactly, so we want to get started now. 
Okay. Yeah. And, and MassSave, you know, we have pretty substantial incentives to, to, to move towards electrification, to put in heat pumps. You know, as, as Chip was saying, if, if something breaks today and you rush to replace it, you're going to put a new oil boiler in and that oil boiler is, is got a, you know, a 20 year lifespan. So for the next 20 years, you guys are going to be on fossil fuels and, and, you know, we want to encourage, um, you know, going green as much as possible, going, you know, electrification as much as possible wh where it makes sense. And, and obviously it comes down to the, 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 either the, the town to, to make that decision, you know, you know, do we want to stick with oil? Do we want to go electrification? Um, and I'll just repeat again, or the school committee. It's sorry. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, sorry. The the school committee. It it yes. it comes down to you guys to to make that decision. You know, you're you're completely open to make any decision you guys want to do. We just want to encourage you and, and give you the incentives to to make it as uh you know as as green and fossil fuel free as possible. Great. Sarah. Yeah, I had a quick question, Chip. Maybe you can, I'm sure you can help answer this. What is the coverage of air conditioning right now in the Hopkins building? Because certainly, you know, I appreciate that we have a little bit more time, you know, with the boilers being more recently replaced. Uh, certainly, these buildings are not prepared for extreme heat and we're having more bouts with extreme heat. That has been a motivator. Um, and so I, what I wouldn't want to see, and I don't know if this is in the plans, is for the district to install air conditioning units, <laughs> you know, non heat pump air conditioning units and kind of because they urgently need cooling and miss the chance to do the all in one, you know, hyper efficient solution of something like a ground source heat pump. I think I'm actually going to pass on to Chris because it's been a while since I've looked at that. And I don't recall off the top of my head how much is air conditioned. I, I don't think it's much, but I will let Chris and Ann answer that one. Yeah, there are air conditioning units outside of the classrooms. Um, I, I'd have to go through the school and actually count uh, you know, how many rooms have them and how many don't. I, I don't know that for. But I think they're local units. There's That's there's right. not a there's not a major you know you know large air handling unit that is you know rooftop that's providing cooling to the building. It's yeah, I'll just, there are mini splits in, in uh, the majority of classrooms and spaces, and then that are powered through um, some units outside of the building, obviously. And they're not um, terribly new. Uh, they were installed before I arrived, and they're nine years, but they're, um, they're also, I mean, they're not, they're not the newest of the new. I'd have to check when the actual install date was. Very good. All right. Is there anything that I should have asked that I didn't? Matt, Sarah, Chip, anyone? Chris. So I, I reached out to Jeff and just asked if he knew who it was that was doing the other in the buildings. He did not. He's going to reach out to the town. So when I find this out, who should I? Let know uh, who the organization was. Should it be Matthew? Yeah, Chris, re reach out to me. Um, I, I manage all the vendors in the municipal program in Western Mass here, so I, I could reach out directly to them and speak with them once once we kind of figure out which company it is. Okay, and and I, I offhand, I don't know, were you included on the original invite to this meeting, so I have your email address? Um, I don't know if I was on it originally. I think it got it got passed to me a couple times. Um, but original, but you're in the calendar invite. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, so I'll use that. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just reiterate here, you know, anytime uh, the school committee or, or anybody else has questions about the energy efficiency program, um, you know, reach out to me directly. I'm happy to jump on a call anytime or, or answer emails anytime, so. Thank you, Matthew. Sarah. I, I guess one last item to note for the crew and would be interested to hear Chip and Matthew's kind of characterization of this is, you know, we've got a new building code that will likely come into effect July of next year that, you know, has um, new and ambitious targets or, that are going to regulate specifically, you know, kind of the heating and cooling loads, the thermal energy use in buildings. And so, you know, as an existing building, interested to hear, you know, of the work that the district was going to plan to do anyway, you know, energy chips plan, would we, would that be triggering code and does this new code have implications for how the district should be thinking about 
really what they need to be planning now so that they're, you know, seeing that horizon of a new building code. Yeah, um, that's it's kind of a tough question without you know a specific scope of work being done, and, and I'm not an expert on what the levels of projects trigger code. Um, yeah, it's that's not something I'm comfortable answering for you guys. Um, so I don't I don't know if Chip, you have a better yeah, idea. I, for in this specific instance, I'm not sure. You know, certainly the the cost as a percentage of the building and all the things it's going to touch uh, may trigger some um, code requirements. But you know, you know those kinds of codes usually you can get exceptions to in an existing building, um, just because you know in order to meet those existing codes with the you know the structures and the insulation and everything else, it, it becomes, you know, frequently impossible. So I don't know in this, you know, particular instance, but, you know, it would be something that will have to be looked at. Yeah. And um, I know, you know, so we were talking about that initial feasibility study. And then after that, a, you know, a much more deeper technical assistance study, I think that deeper technical assistance study might be something that could uh, ad address these issues. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Well, I thank you uh, all. I promised you a 45 minute meeting and you're getting a 45 minute meeting. Thank you so much. This has answered a lot of our questions. We will cycle back uh, with um, guidance from the overall school committee and we look forward to working with you all in the future. Yeah, when the you. recording for this meeting is available, thank you, Humera. When the recording for this meeting is available, I will link it into, there's already an agenda item to recap this discussion with the entire school committee, and I will link the recording of the meeting into the school committee agenda for December 20th at 5.30 p.m. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Nice right. to meet thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.